This is Daddy O from the original Stetsasonic crew in Brooklyn, and you're watching Brand News. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Hey, what's really good? And welcome back to Brand News and Life, where hip-hop has a new direction. Also, where we share information about people and events making a difference around the world and even up the street. I'm your boy, Christopher Martin, better known as Play, and I want to get this new episode started. Our first feature is with a very special young man who approached me a few years ago. And aside from his very unique appearance, I'll put it that way, um, something even more important appealed to me, and that was his character. And ever since then, not only have I had the opportunity to share my experiences and information and advice to bless his life, he has done the same for me, especially when it comes to foot gear. But with all that being said, I want to introduce you to a very special young man, and I want you all to bless him with support. His name is Brandon Williams, better known as Mike Jack. Yo, Mike, what's good? My name is Brandon Williams, also known as Mike Jack. Um, I'm in Tallahassee, Florida. Reside here. I love this beautiful city. And uh, currently, right now, I'm into music, acting, and modeling. And uh, it's been a little journey, starting from there to get where I'm at now. I think I'm kind of different in the fact that I'm real, real bright. When people see me, they're like, "Oh man, you, you, you real bright? Are you uh, are you white? Are you?" Hispanic, uh, you mix, everybody always wonder what am I, am I albino? It's the question I get all the time. But in real life, in real life I'm black. Um, I'm African American, both my mother and my father are black, but I have vitiligo, uh, which is a skin disease where you lose your pigmentation, like Michael Jackson. And uh, that's why I came up with the name Mike Jack, because uh, that was one of my idols that I looked up to. So I took on that name Mike Jack. To be honest, man, it was kind of rough growing up. Uh, kids used to pick on me talk about me, laugh at me and stuff, uh, call me, <laughs> call me, say I would got acid thrown on me, bleach thrown on me and whatnot. Uh, but my mom would say, baby, you, you beautiful. God made you special for a reason, you know what I mean? She said, they talked about Jesus and look how he turned out. They talked about, you know, like Dr. King, look how he turned out. So no matter what the negative things they used to say, um, I knew inside myself that I was special and that I was gonna make something happen and make it, make it come out of me, you know, be the best that I could be in whatever it was. The music I do right now, it's like a little R&B feel. Sometimes hip hop rap in it. I call it mood music. So it's uh, just depending on the mood I'm in when I go in the studio. Watching TV, watching you, you. As I buy this, they like for the spoon, spoon, sheets and covers, rappers like mummies and tombs. But your breathing is not in sync. We out of tune. All of this because of a nigga. Two, two. Is it you, me, or the other dude? Dude, three weeks of neglect is starting to hurt me so. In actuality, I feel like I'm, a, I'm like an ugly duckling type thing. I was uh, going through these phases and changes. Um, people look at you like you're funny. They look at you like there's something wrong with you, like you're sick. And I was healthy. It's just that my, my melanin, my body, was attacking itself and it wasn't producing it like it used to. So uh, I had splotches all over my body. I had little, little white marks everywhere. So imagine being brown and you have all these spots everywhere. Spots everywhere. And it's like um, almost like a cow, or, or or like a pit bull. How like the little dogs have all these little spots over there, and like a giraffe body part. So people look at you and they make these little assumptions, and uh, you know, at times you know you would feel sad, you know. But inside of me, I just knew I was different. I just knew it happened for a reason, and I was gonna use that to my advantage, and that's what I'm doing. Powerful, right? told you. That's my dude, Mike Jack. Now he's your dude. Support him. Be a blessing to him. Um, I'll never forget the first time he introduced himself to me. It was something unique about him, not just an appearance, but just his spirit. And the incredible thing about him is that he um, takes that 
spirit, that energy, that good energy, and blesses other young men with it, showing how, right there in front of him, how he took something that some would have looked at as a disability or a life, uh, you know, threatening challenge or whatever, as far as a career and purpose goes, and no, uses it and turns it into something that fuels him to move forward. Please go to brandnews.com. And uh, we, we try and feature, and we do feature here, beautiful videos and stories from others, because that's what Brand News is about. It's not about me. It's about other future filmmakers and journalists. The same way people blessed me and Kid and others, I want to do that for others as well. So that's what Brand News is about. We don't get no money here. This is a labor of love out of my pocket. But I just feel this purpose to be a platform, not only to share great stories, and, and, but also to be a platform and a podium for up and coming journalists, um, uh, filmmakers, cinematographers, all of that. I just want to be that platform for you guys. Take my celebrity and just direct it to you guys. So Stephen Starks blessed us with a um, story about the Black Wall Street homecoming in Durham, North Carolina. There's many throughout the country. This one as well is extraordinary. And I had the honor and was humbled to be a part of one of their panel discussions out there. And I just thought this would be an excellent story. And Stephen Starks blessed us with his PO on it. In the beginning is me, but then we take it to Stephen Starks, but you'll see it in the credits. But with all that being said, uh, check this out. It's Black Wall Street Homecoming, Durham, North Carolina. For the last couple of days, we've been celebrating Black Wall Street, Black excellence, Black entrepreneurship, Black business. It's been the Black Wall Street homecoming. And that name is significant because here in Durham, Durham is the location of one of our country's Black Wall Streets. Um, a lot of people know about Tulsa because of the tragedy that happened. But here in North Carolina, we had Durham. And Durham was a place where you had people with so much ambition, they decided, hey, let me start a bank. Let me start an insurance company. Let me start an entire university. And so that level of ambition is what we bring to the table, and we use that legacy to inspire a new generation of entrepreneurs. Welcome to Durham, North Carolina. We are so excited. This is fourth annual Black Wall Street Homecoming, and we are glad you are here. We've got workshops, seminars, keynotes from across the country. Folks who've been on magazine covers recently, we're bringing together history, right into the present, and we're gonna take it into the future. There's a tremendous power in having like-minded folks, entrepreneurs, investors, etc., all in the same space. Frequently, we don't get a chance to see people who look like us in order to model after or remind ourselves of what's possible. So events like these are extremely important to almost the souls of folks um, in order to give us levels of confidence and self-belief. The tools and the nuggets that you get, because it's a panel of people talking, it gives you so much information and it really helps you have the tools you leave here and if you just implement some of the tools, your business is gonna grow. Your passion for what you have specific knowledge in doing is what will be the driver of your ability to be able to have success. What I love most about it is the audience engagement during the conversation. People seem really here for the right reason. I think Black Wall Street is a phenomenal opportunity yeah. to network with folks and be able to exchange business cards so that we can continue this conversation. This is just the catalyst to ultimately what can go on for the next 363 days of the year. You know, had no idea what to expect and ended up meeting some you know, really awesome people that I've been able to build a relationship with over the years. Um, so I want to thank Black Wall Street for the opportunity. Uh, I want to salute them for the work that they're doing. Uh, and I'm really happy to be here this weekend. Black Wall Street is something that once was, unless we, the folks that are standing in this room, ensure that it's not just a museum, not just a, a sign on Paris Street that we look back on. Let's raise a glass to the future of Black Wall Street, y'all. What's really good? <laughs> that. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Brandon. Mike Jack. Thank you for these uh, two features on this episode of Brand News and Life. So, um, oh, what's up with the sweater? Oh, funny thing about this sweater. It's a Ralph Lauren sweater. I love, anybody that knows me knows I love Ralph Lauren and all of that. And... I kept running into this sweater. It started out at a crazy price. 
and I had my eye on it. And then um, it went down significantly low. And I kept feeling like the sweater was, get me, get me, play, get me, buy me, buy me. And I didn't want to buy it. I'm going to keep it 100 with y'all. I didn't want to buy it because I think it's unfortunate what this used to represent and what it's beginning to represent now. Um, I voted. And I thought this would be a good representation to vote. Like, no, we're not going to give this up. This is ours. Our ancestors died for this, for freedom. And I will not allow those who want to disrupt and disrespect and insult the sacrifices, blood, lives, not just money, not just you know, humiliation, their ego, lives for us to vote and to be free. We didn't ask to come here. I'm gonna get into that one day, but we're here. And this is ours now too. So the reason why I wore this, and I asked a couple of people and just to see what their take would be on it. And they're like, oh, you mean to get out and vote? And I'm like, thank you. Vote, please. Interesting, I almost forgot, thank you, Lord. I used to be one who thought voting was uh, a waste of time. My vote don't count. That was when I was out there in them streets, in these streets, and I just had a bad attitude about it. But then a good friend of mine put me on blast and him being the scholar that he was and still is just read me the riot act and made me feel embarrassed and ashamed that I wasn't exercising my right that people died for. And that man was Christopher Patrick Reed, better known as Kid from Kid and Play. And that speech and him making me accountable and making me feel somewhat ashamed turned my life around. I'm like a political junkie, but, but anyway, thank you, kid. Please, use your right. Vote. I hear all the statistics about young people aren't really into it and some that feel what's the use. No, don't do that. Vote. God bless you all greatly, and I'll see you on our next episode. Brand news of life where hip hop has a new direction, baby. May God bless you greatly in Jesus Christ. Thank you.